So in our previous video, we had covered the basics in 3D printing. Now, before we go and do our 3D letter channel printing, I need to teach you first how to do dual color printing. But before we even get to that, if you haven't watched the previous video where we did the basics, please go and watch that first, then come back to this one, and then I can show you how to step by step do dual color printing. So we need to now just do the design first before anything else. So I'm going to quickly head on over to Tinkercad and we are going to design a square and from there I'll teach you how to do two different colors where you want it and where you're going to start each color. So before we do that let's head on to design and make sure we have a square. So the first thing we need to do is go to Tinkercad, open up a new document and we're going to head on over just to our square here and that's it that's all we need to do it doesn't matter what size you make it here because we can later change it in our cura profile so from here we can go ahead make sure we've selected it say export say stl and then save it where you need to now that that's saved we're going to go on over to our cura profile program here now the first thing we need to do is make sure that you've got our color set up correctly. So if you're using the same profile I am, right at the top here you've got your one and two color. Now in order to get that we need to click here and sometimes you have all of these different options available here. Now I've gone ahead and created my own profile for the uh, 3D printed plastic that I get from AM because that's the one I want to use. So in order to just do that, I've already made one here. So we're gonna just show you how to do that. We're gonna go add more materials or manage materials. So we can go manage. Then from here, you can go ahead and say create new. Now, once you've gone and done that, it might ask you if you wanna change a few settings, you can just say keep changes. Um, and then from here, we can go ahead and name our custom material. So you can give this a name if you want. Um, you know, you can give it a brand. So I went ahead and obviously named this PET um, for AM and then the brand AM. And then what are we using? PETG. From there, you can go ahead and change the color. Now, you'll have to make one profile first. Then once you're finished with that profile, so let's say for instance, the first one we're gonna do, we'll just click blue. Then we're going to make sure that the rest of this is correct. So the density is 1.24 four grams per uh, centimeter cubed. And then the thickness of our filament is 1.75 millimeters. Now you can always go put your cost and how much you get per roll. That'll also help you once you slice. At the end it shows you how much you're using and how much it costs. Then we can go to our print settings. Now depending on what color you choose depends on the settings now i've gone ahead and done a few tests and i know that there's a difference between the orange and the black and the clear and the pink so just keep in mind that you want to do a few tests first to see if all your layers do weld correctly and you don't end up getting gaps like we've got here with the black so orange takes a lot more heat on the bed and the nozzle whereas the black takes less heat so that's a test that I had to figure out for myself. And now I know that let's say for instance, we're gonna do orange, but even though I've done it um, blue, that we're gonna do at 235 degrees for the nozzle and the bed we're gonna leave at, at 70. And the standby temperature and retraction distance, you don't have to worry about any of that because we change it mostly in our settings here. So that's not something to worry about. So once you've done that, you've now finished your, your profile, you can go back and if you want to make a dual color, then you just go ahead and you say activate this profile. Once you've done that, you go back to those three lines and you say duplicate. And then once you've duplicated, you can go ahead and change the second PET profile to another color. Then effectively, you'll have at the top here, two different colors available. And let's quickly show you what that looks like. So I'm going to go back here, we're going to click here, and our first one, we're going to go to the advanced machinery, the one I made, and we're going to go to color number one, and we're just going to say keep changes. Then we're going to make sure that our color number two 
is also going to be advanced machinery which I made myself and then number two and there you can see we've got red and blue now if you keep them the same you won't be able to differentiate between the two when you're selecting to do dual color so you must make sure that you've got two different colors at least at the top there so now that that's done we can go ahead and select the layer heart that we are looking for now it is always best to do somewhere around 0.2 or less if you're going to do something more like the extra fast or the coarse or extra coarse where you're going to 0.6 millimeters you might incur a few issues with how much plastic is being put out of the nozzle so I like to keep it a good flow and a decent height thickness so we're going to go for draft now it's going to ask me if I want to change any settings here and I would prefer not to because I've already changed a lot of settings so I'm going to keep changes from there we can go ahead and now open that artwork that we had saved that square that we had made okay so here's our square here now as you can see it's only one color it's selected the first color nozzle um, and we're going to stay in color number one and whatever we change here will change for number two but just keep in mind if it doesn't you'll need to just switch between the two and make sure that you are using the same settings so the first thing we're going to do is go to our infill and we're going to make sure our infill density now that means how much it's going to fill on the inside of this object and that determines the strength for this exercise I'm going to go as little as 5% purely because this is a test and we don't need to fill this thing up too much and make waste of material so I'm going to leave it at 5 and then we're going to leave the rest of the settings you can go ahead and change the inside pattern obviously it does show you so if you want to change the triangles you can hover over it it will uh, explain to you what the different shapes are as you can see there's triangles and we've got lines and a grid my favorite to use is cubic um, it's got a very nice rigidity to it, it makes it a lot stronger than using any other of those options we can go ahead and close that um, make sure you do not change this to nozzle one or two leave it to uh, not overridden then we go to our material and we make sure that the temperature settings are correct so if we're doing color number one which is going to be our orange today that one we're going to set at 235 and then our build plate is going to be set to 60. from there we are going to go down to speed and we're going to set the speed to 100 you can go as much as 150 millimeters but the faster you go the more mistakes you'll have so just keep that in mind then we're going to go over to our travel and we're going to make sure that these two are enabled and we're going to do 10 millimeters at 45 millimeters speed which is a really good setting now we're going to go to cooling and we're going to change our fan speed to 100 then you must go to initial fan speed and also change it to 100 purely because while it's printing its first layer you want it to harden instantly and stick to the build plate whereas otherwise if you have a too uh, too much temperature and it doesn't cool down fast enough your edges will start curling upwards and you won't have a flat base printed so must make sure that you have that at a hundred percent with PETG from there we do not have a support needed because it's a square and our build adhesion we're going to go ahead and do a skirt and we're going to do a line count of three and three mils distance away from the object which is perfect now that skirt basically prints an object around your initial object to make sure that your levels are correct and that you're printing the first layer at the right height you might have to adjust the machine accordingly while it's busy doing that because if that first line does not stick then you know that your height is incorrect on your nozzle which can be adjusted on the machine while you're printing next thing is we can go ahead to dual extrusion here and make sure that we tick our prime tower now what is a prime tower? A prime tower is something that will print a little circle off to the side that 
will keep the nozzle clean every single time that it's going to print a different color. It goes and does a little bit of printing on that little circle away from your object so that it can get rid of the previous color so that when it comes to actually printing the next layer, the new color, you do not have this color shift that you see here at the bottom where the printer, it will pull the previous plastic out, it will print what's left of that color being let's say orange and then you'll end up having a color shift which is not what you want. You want it to be precise color changes. So we enable the prime tower and the prime tower size, it's up to you depending on how much, how big your object is, you want to make that prime tower accordingly to the same size of the object that you're printing. So for instance, if my object was something of this size, our prime tower shouldn't be 20 mils in diameter, it should be more of the diameter of the object that you're printing. So this would be more of a 100 mil diameter prime tower versus a 20 mil for an object that is much smaller. So just keep that in mind. So once we have that ticked, we're just going to make sure that the prime tower's position, which you can only see once you slice, you're going to move it closer to your object. So this is X, Y, Z, right now it's in the top right corner. So we can go ahead and maybe do around about 300 by 300. And then we can see whether or not that's going to be in the right place just now. So we'll quickly have a look by slicing our object. And then we can go to preview and see where our prime tower should be. But because we haven't done our second color, that means it doesn't need the prime tower. So the program adjusts that for you. So the first thing we need to do is go have a look at the size of our object. So it's 20 by 20. We're gonna go ahead and change that and make sure you've got uniform scaling on. We're gonna go and do 40 by 40 by 40, which will be a lot better to deal with. And we're gonna keep our prime tower at 20 mils because that was the size I used for this one. Now what we're gonna go ahead and do is click on our object and we're going to do a support blocker and we click back again. So we can repeat that process. We click on our object, we click on support blocker and we click back on our object again and you'll see a square will form. Now we need to make this bigger than our object that we already have. So make sure you deselect it you select your support blocker. You select the, the actual select tool so we can move it to the side. From there, we can go to our sizing tool and we can do untick scaling the uniform. And now we need to make it bigger. We're gonna make this one 60 wide, which is gonna be bigger. And then our um, Y is also gonna be 60. We'll do that and then what I want to do is I want to do half half. I want to do this block exactly in half, one color and the other half another. Now you can change that and have a 20-80 um, ratio or a 60-40. That is completely up to you. So knowing that it's a 40 by 40, we're going to go ahead and make the height 20. And once we've got that, we can click our select tool again. And then you can use your right click on your mouse to now move and look at the object from different angles. So for instance, I want a bit of a more front angle view. You can also click on the options down here on the bottom left, which gives you all the different views as well. So we click front view and you can zoom in. And if that gives you a bit of issues, use your middle um, roller uh, ball. You click it in and then you can move it around so that you have a better view. So I'm just gonna do it like that. I wanna move this so that it's completely over my object, just like so. Make sure that it's there. Yeah, that's perfect. It's completely covering the one side. And now what I wanna do is I want to take this all the way to the bottom so that we start this side with one color. Okay, now that we've done that, we can go ahead and make sure that it's completely zero and we push zero on our keyboard and enter and that will make sure that the actual uh, support blocking square is flat on our build plate. 
So now that we've gone ahead and done that, we can go ahead and select which color we want it to be. So if I select my support blocker and I click on color number one, it will be for that color. The next thing we can do is go ahead and select our support blocker, which is there at the bottom, and we can right click and we can say multiply and multiply it by one. Now we have a second block that we can deal with. So with this block, what we want to do is go ahead and now select our color number two so that we have two colors in our support blocker. Now, what we need to do is now move this one up and because we know that the first support blocker ends at 20, we can begin this one at 20. So that means now we have it perfectly above our item and all we need to do is now move it over the top and then there's one last thing we can do. So making sure that we have got our number two selected for the top section, which will be black, and then the bottom section will be orange. What we need to do is just make this ever so slightly bigger on top so that it knows that it's not going to fall short of any way. And we go back here and make sure it's 20 as well. And there we go, it's a little bit above your object and that is perfect. So now that we've made sure that this block is a little bit higher than our original um, one and we've made sure that this one in particular is starting from 20 and it's a little bit taller than the actual artwork then we know that the top layer is going to be covered in the second color. So once we've done that we can go ahead and select the first block we've made. We can go ahead to per model and we're going to change this to our modifier settings and we go and select cutting mesh. And once we've done that, we can then go and do it for the second one. And as you've noticed, our first color is now changed to the actual color of our profile. So therefore, if we go and do the same thing for the second color, and we go and do cutting mesh, there you see now we've got two colors within the same block. So now what we can do is go ahead, make sure we've got nothing selected and we push slice. And once we've done that, we can go ahead and push preview. And there we have it. We have got a two color object. And once more as we've got our prime tower. So now if you see here, our prime tower is only the same height as our first colored section. Now what that basically is going to do is we're going to print here um, our first color and it's going to keep going back here until it gets to the top and it's going to just use this red or orange up so that when it moves to start doing blue it's not going to mix two colors where you see a difference in color because that's not what we want and that's the reason for doing the prime tower. Now one thing that we can get rid of here is this blue line here which is going to be its skirt we go to number two we go to build adhesion and we can say none and then we slice again and as you can see you should see that the blue will disappear within the skirt so see there's no more skirt and now we don't have more than one color printing at the bottom we only have our second color halfway so that's all we need to do now for our settings on our program. What we need to do now is just export it, head on to our 3D printer and push print and see what happens. Okay, so we're here at our 3D printer and I just need to say one or two things first before we go ahead and just push print. So the first thing is making sure that you've got some good amount of glue and a good glue. This one is uh, supplied with the printer from AM and they also sell it in our shop at our office which is something that is very nice to have because normally people use print but this liquid glue certainly does save my life and making sure that the print that we're doing sticks to the bed. Next thing is we've got our orange loaded in number one and our black loaded into number two and I have forcefully loaded this one in first 
and we've retracted black to around about here and that's the kind of position that you want black to be sitting or your second color to be sitting if that's the color that you're going to be printing next. If that's your first color you're going to be printing then obviously you'll have that one fully loaded and this one half out inside its Bowden tube. So from now, what you need to do is make sure that you get yourself a piece of material, whatever it may be, make sure that it can't leave any fibers behind. And once your machine is at temperature and it's ready to print, then you're going to push print only, not push print and then warm up your printer. Otherwise, you're gonna wait here for a long time, rather warm it up while you're busy doing your design. So you're going to take your cloth and you're going to go over to your nozzle because as you can see there's some leftover plastic. We're going to go ahead and remove that. So there you go, it's off. And then we go back again and we just wipe all the way around it to make sure that we've gotten all of the old uh, burnt plastic off from the previous job. And as you can see here on the towel, there's some of our black that we had left over from the previous job and now you do not want that falling onto your item and creating an uneven layer. Now that we've done that, we can go ahead and start our print job. So we just need to go to printing, select which one we want and push print. So we're gonna go ahead, we've got our temperature already set here. We're gonna go to printing, we're gonna go to SD card and we're gonna go to our 3D AM test and we're gonna go ahead and push confirm. Now the printer is going to go to home, which is the bottom right corner and it's going to go all the way down and activate its micro switches. Once that's done, it should move over to the left and start printing. While this is moving over to the left, just keep in mind that your bed clamps that are included with your printer, make sure that you do not put this one here as your print head will knock it on the way down here. So I've just forcibly just moved this one to the middle. It still does keep this glass secure from moving, but if you leave it here, the nozzle will definitely hit it and you will have a failure. So what it's doing now is just cleaning out the nozzle and you're just gonna grab that piece with your finger and now it's moving over and it's gonna start doing its printing. So we are finished here, the print is done, but before I remove this from the bed, I just want to point out an issue that we have had during the printing. So between its purge tower and the actual object, we have got some strings here and a little bit of excess of plastic. But I know exactly what went wrong here, so I'm going to remove this and then we're going to go to a close-up so I can exactly explain what went wrong. Okay, so the print is now done. I've removed it from the bed. And the first problem that I indicated was this excess plastic and the strings that it's leaving behind going to and from the purge tower. 
Now, this is purely down to retraction settings. Now, when I say retraction settings, we did cover that a little bit before in this video. So go back to that, have a look where I've spoken about it. And then you can see that you just need to increase the amount that the plastic is pulled back into the machine so that there's nothing that's left to ooze out the nozzle while it's moving from here to the purge tower to clean out the plastic. So that being said, in this case, I would increase those settings, not the speed, I would increase the distance of which the machine pulls the plastic back th through the nozzle so that you don't have any of this excess. Now, you wouldn't need to do that. Obviously, if you don't have this problem, leave your attraction settings the same. Next thing that I want to point out is that if we turn this to the opposite side and we have a look at these lines that are going here and you can kind of see that there's gaps between those lines. Now, if you can't see those gaps, that is purely from one thing and one thing only. That is where it starts printing. Now, if I can explain, if you have rhythm attraction settings on, and let's say we've moved from the first layer, now we move to our next layer, and then the next layer after that, every single time that it moves to the next layer, what it does is it pulls back the plastic so it doesn't have any oozing out like here and then it goes to the inner wall and it starts printing now unfortunately what happens is because the speed is too fast it's not allowing the printer to put down enough plastic while it's moving from here to there and then you get thinner plastic lines and not a good adhesion where you have gaps between your lines so what you would need to do here is slow down the printing of the outer wall and then you will have less of this problem and then you can see from there if you need to decrease it or increase it until you get the correct settings and purely this is for black. I find that black is a little bit more difficult to print whereas the other colors are less iffy so black you definitely need to slow down when you're printing your outer walls and also enable the traction settings to be a little bit more. So that is the main issues that I found with this one. So it's quite easy just to go and change those settings in Cura and then you go and do another test print until you come right with the colors that you have. So just keep that in mind. If black is causing this, then you know how to fix that. Even if it's orange, pink, blue or green are doing the same thing, then you just apply the same settings that I've just told you now to help you print better with that particular color that you're having a problem with. So with this excess plastic here on the side, you can go ahead and use the included cutters that you get with your printer and you can simply just snip these off and your print will look immediately a lot better. Now for the pieces that are like this where it's not too smooth and the sides a bit rough, you can always go ahead and sand this down. The color will still stay the same. Obviously you'll get a matte finish instead of a gloss finish. Really doesn't matter because sometimes you're going to paint this or maybe you're having it up in the air where you're not going to see the finish. So you can go ahead and sand this. This is not a throwaway. The structure is sound. It is square exactly. No sides have fallen out or warped. So this is not a failed print. It just needs some finer adjustments to the settings. And that is basically it for printing two colors. So guys, I've done exactly what I intended to do here. I've taught you how to do two colors exactly. Now I'm gonna need you to go and do those tests and do not stop at just these two colors that I've shown you here today. At AM Shop, they have a wide variety of colors available. So go ahead, have a look at them, grab some of those colors, do those tests that you need to so that you get those settings down like I've shown you in this video. Because our next video that we're gonna be doing is our 3D letter channel printing. Now you need to have these settings down correct so that you can get that next video and get it done exactly how it's meant to be. So thank you for watching this and keep your eyes peeled for the next one.